Nowadays, youths are probably excited to go <laughs> prison, meet their friends. You know what I mean? All that, whatever. But wait, when you're like, when you get older, it's just like it's long run. Assalamu alaikum, guys, and welcome to another video on Smile to Jannah. All right, so Frenzo Harami is a well-known Asian artist that is prominent in the trap, rap, grime scene here in the UK. Now he is somebody that tends to use Punjabi words. He also uses samples from Asian tracks, Bollywood, Lollywood, all that sort of stuff. He is also very outspoken about his trap lifestyle. So maybe that makes him stand out from amongst his fellow peers. Yes indeed there may be no shortage of Asian gangs here in the UK but on a online rapping platform like GRM Daily we have very few representatives I guess so because he is amongst a few people maybe that's why he has attracted quite a bit of controversy as well. But when you do drop those bars in Apni Zaban in Punjabi and that yeah that the community has not really heard that before. Yeah, it's, it's something it's something new. Maybe that's what it is. And of course, not to mention his name, which I mean, let's let him explain this one. I meant Harami in terms of like, you know, like Rami, like Rami. Like, like in a Rami. slang term. Not like in terms of like a bastard, like I haven't got a dad. Because that that could be one meaning, but I mean it in a way where like, you know, like a savage. Some out of touch people still think us not talking about these sorts of things will make them magically go away. But if you analyze the analytics and the views that these sorts of videos and exposure they get and the attention of major musicians like Drake, I think he co-signed Skepta, Jadakiss, He's signed Young Ads. So even these prominent artists that many of you guys will know, even they have taken an interest in this sort of scene. And if you ask the, these kids that go to state schools, many of them, I would say, not only know them, but are somewhat involved in this scene as well. And the reason why I say this is because lecturing and guilting your kids is not going to make them change. Yeah, it's just not enough anymore. So I would definitely say, listen to what they're saying, understand what they're saying, and then give them relevant and practical advice. And who better to listen to than the very people that are being championed as the torchbearers of this lifestyle? Because we do tend to otherize and dehumanize these people and you know, even look down at them and call them certain names. And if that's all they hear from you, I mean, why on earth would they come to you? Yeah, why on earth would they feel drawn towards the religion? And I would argue that these individuals hold more potential than these suit wearing thugs that run our society. Even that, you know, just because I made a song about Yemen, doesn't mean I'm a Jungle Manda. I'm striving, striving, striving yeah. I strive to that's be right. one. That's right, that's but it. Again, like that's not enough, you yeah. know what I mean? I need to do more, we all need to do more. Like, Most often than not, these very people are just a victim of bad choices. Um, it's our own decisions that lead us down the wrong path. We can't blame no one, no one for that. And not to mention the main cause, and that is being around bad company and a bad environment. Well, it's, it's the environment that yeah, we grow up, you know? Yeah. Like we're a product of, of, of our environment as mm. well, so I think that's what it is. Even me, if if I didn't hang around certain people at a certain time in my life, um, you know, my dad was busy at work at the time. Obviously, I'm, I'm going out with other people and getting led astray. But if parents are more involved in these crucial few years, then I mean, you can mitigate some of that damage and help your kid not go off the rails. You meet one or two people and then, you know, your life can go down the wrong way. So as a result of this bad environment, Frenzo is no stranger to prison environment. Over the course of my teenage life and into adulthood, I've probably been in prison about eight times. And not to mention drugs and narcotics. You know that stretch that you did for three years? Mm -hmm. What was that for Mal? That was for years, applying so class A. So when somebody is so engrossed within such a lifestyle, to merely condemn these people or speak down at these people when all they want necessarily is, is, is respect. And of course, some of the places that our brothers are stuck in, I would actually say, it's kind of like hell on earth, yeah? You, you know, these trap houses and crack dens and all sorts of places. So, I mean, what extinguishes darkness? Yeah, there's a saying, it says that you can shout at darkness, you can scream at it, throw things at it, but the only thing that extinguishes darkness is light. 
Yeah, a place, a room can be dark for 400 years, but you bring a light in there, bang, immediately the darkness goes. And when you actually speak to these people on their level, you will see the light that they actually harbour. I don't feel like I glamorise any of this stuff. You know, I, I can't see anywhere in my music, apart from when I'm talking about how much money I might have made or whatever I might have done, my music's not glamorising anything. I don't want to influence any any young up in here to go down the wrong path. I'm not trying to do that. I'll be real with you, I've never tried to do that. His slow progress in, in practising his religion. There's one thing, I think it was more than five years since I kept a rosa when I wrote that, but I couldn't remember how... how five, long it was five years minimum, yeah? Minimum five years. But yeah, since I have kept the rosa since, so. Alhamdulillah, how was, how was last Ramadan? It was good. The thing is, it was I didn't do music. I didn't do any music. Um, I uploaded one or two things on my Instagram, but I didn't really do any music for it at the month. Like you said, bro, it's the, it, man, man, try in it. Yeah. It's the effort that counts, and the, inshallah, that effort grows. His respect of his parents. Even though it was my first offense, he had to give me a custodial sentence. Yeah. So, um, but I've seen my mum like cry when I got sentenced. That is what finally I think like hit me the hardest you know what I mean that's what actually made me cry and wanting to and trying to speak out about the problems that are affecting the ummah as soon as I thought, got in a position where people would listen to me I thought right let me speak up speak up about it and I did and the thing is no one listens because the it's suppressed by YouTube and the platforms we use I think if you mention anything about Palestine or Yemen or any of these places Anything political I think the algorithm just blocks it out and I think these sorts of things being said from somebody that is surrounded with vices with haram, with, with materialism says a lot about the value of this religion I mean no matter where you are, what you're doing eventually you will realise that the only thing that is giving practical solutions it, it is Islam yeah so if you can't give somebody da'wah if you can't help them and encourage them at least don't discourage them so i would end with the dua that may allah bring our brothers and sisters back that are lost and may allah give us the tawfiq to understand the problem and not make it worse <laughs> yeah all right guys let's leave it there until next time hey. assalamu alaikum